Hello, my name is Ryan Weber, and today we are going to build a video porthole. What is a video porthole, you say? Well, let me show you. There we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with two layers of video. We're going to punch an alpha channel hole through the top layer, add a frame to the alpha channel, and allow it to move around to expose the back layer, kind of like you're looking through a porthole. All right, sounds simple enough, right? Let's see if we can build it. The steps required are simple. Add two video layers, punch an alpha hole through the top layer, add a frame to the hole, and uh, make the porthole move as one. I have two video files ready to go. We will start by adding the stars to the background. You can see the stars are now playing. My static fill is now added. On top of the um, the stars, you can see that the stars are coming through a little bit. That's because our blend mode is additive. We're going to want to change that to transparent because we're going to want this layer to apply an alpha channel to uh, allow that transparency. Right, so how are we going to make our alpha channel? Well, we're going to do it using the native shapes actor in Isadora. So if I add a shapes actor, and another projector, just so that we can see what we're doing here. Uh, by default, we get a white square that is showing on the, uh, the stage. And um, because I'm using the theme of a porthole, I want that to be round. So I'm going to change that to have uh, 64 faucets, or facets, <laughs> uh, 64 of them to make a nice round shape. And if we look at what we have here in our thumbnail thumbnail rollover of this Shapes Actor coming out, you can see that we have a, a couple things happening here. Uh, one, we have a, a white circle that's on an alpha channel background. And we also have uh, this being drawn at 640 by 360, which is our default uh, draw size set up in the preferences, rather than uh, at the same size as our content, which is uh, 1920 by 1080 which also happens to be the stage size I have set up at the moment. So what I recommend doing uh, is adding a get stage size actor, linking in the, uh, the width and height to the size attributes of the shape actor. And if I just toggle this so that those get pushed through, you can now see that the, the horizontal size and vertical size of the shape actor is being set to the same size as our destination stage. So if we look at our thumbnail once again, uh, you can now see that the draw size matches what our video size is. And in the end, what that's going to do is give us a, a cleaner edge, less anti-aliasing, uh, it's just going to look higher definition than if we were to work with a lower definition image. So that's a good starting point, but we still have this problem in that um, we have an, a lot of alpha channel in this video. And when we have a white section and all we see in our video output is, is white overlaid over top of our static. So the actor that we want to use to punch this hole through the static is the add alpha channel actor. So I've added that and I'm going to drag it up here so it auto inserts into uh, this video line. And I will take the, uh, the shapes actor and feed it in as the mask. And I'm going to delete this projector so that uh, we see what happened. Now what's happening is that the way the alpha channel works is that it's kind of reversed to what the default of what this shapes actor is creating. And the uh, alpha channel actor also doesn't really recognize alpha channel itself. It's looking for a black and white image that tells it um, to select between two different inputs based on either black or white. So what I can do is I can go down to the shapes actor here change the background color so that it's not transparent. I'll move it up so it's solid black. And now if we look at the output, you can see it's still, it's solid black with white and, but our output hasn't changed. So you can tell that the black is telling it to do the same thing as what the alpha was before. 
and that it hasn't swapped our inputs around. Because really what we want is we want that static to be in the surrounding area, not inside the circle. Which means we're going to have to invert our color. So we're going to go to the, the fill color of the shapes actor. And it's selected as white as default. We're going to change that to black. So now we see... Uh, we see the stars within the black area of the circle. And our background color will swap that to white. And ta-da! We now have very much the beginnings of our porthole. We have a hole punching through our static where we see the star field. So, the next step. What will our next step be? Well, we have kind of two elements. Add a frame to our hole. Now, it's important that we're adding the frame to the hole rather than overlaying the frame as another element. And that's going to become apparent as we move ahead and I show you some fun things later. Because I'm making that decision now, there's a certain way I'm going about it. In Isidore, there's a lot of flexibility and there's some different ways that we could do this. But for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this shapes actor so that it's the same size, same number of facets, it's round. Um, and I'm going to increase the line size a little bit and add a new projector just so that we drop it right on top of everything. So obviously it's whiting everything out. We want our background color to be transparent again. And we have a line size that you can see. So here we go. We have a portal with a border. Yeah, so we have a porthole with a border and that's great. Right now, this this porthole is on top. It's a separate overlay via projector, right? So you can see it's moving around like that. And, and we have two different video feeds. We have this feed of that, of the overlay, and we have the feed of the alpha channeling. Um, because of something I'm going to do later, uh, which I think you'll like, I'm, I'm going to compile all of this, compact this all down into a single video feed. All right. So to do that, I'm going to use a matte actor. Now the matte actor is actually a lot of fun uh, once you know how to use it because you can start to compile and move around different components on top of each other really nicely. So I'm going to shuffle a couple things around. Uh, this is going to be our background now. So I'll move it into the background of our matte actor. I will connect the output of that back through. Um, I'm going to delete this projector from the shapes actor. It's gone. We want to overlay that um, border into, into our matte actor. And what we need to do is we need to tell the matte actor to use the alpha channel found in the, uh, the foreground image. What you can see now is that we have essentially our porthole, but we no longer have a hole in our porthole. And, and why is that? We see black there, but we don't see the stars. And that's because I forgot to make the, the center of this circle uh, transparent. So we still have a solid black fill. Quick fix. Move here. Make it. And now we see our star field. Uh, again, we'll look at that in the thumbnail. Now we just see, we can barely see it. But there's a white circle there over top of the checkerboard transparency. And this is a great place to be. Because we really now have the portal punched through. We have it being compiled down to a single point. Now, because we want these portholes to be able to move around, there's a couple different ways we can do this. And it, the approach that you take will depend on what you feel like doing. We can move the foreground via the matte actor. And we can move the shapes themselves individually uh, via the shapes actor. Now, which way you want to do this is really kind of up to you. What I'm going to recommend this time around is because we're two, using two shapes actors, that we use the horizontal position and the vertical position of those shape actors because I happen to know that the scale range of the, uh, the shapes actor and the scale range of the matte actor are different we would have to do a little more scale limiting uh, to make that work. Which is actually how I've done it previously. Just now decided it's 
going to be easier to use the uh, the position settings of the shape sector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an absolute value actor and I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to use two of these and there's going to be a reason for this. You're going to see it very soon. Um, we're also going to add a limit scale value actor because we need these to be scaled to negative 50 to 50. And so I'll connect those up. You'll see how this works in one moment. There's a reason that I want my input range to be zero to 100 and then to scale that to negative 50 to 50. Um, so what I'll do first is connect these up so that we can do some playing around with the input values just so that we see that it's all working. Um, vertical, horizontal, okay. That's okay. And we're going to take that here. As long as I'm doing them the same, yeah. So now you can see that I can move this side to side by uh, changing the input value and I can move it up and down by changing the input value. Now an absolute value actor is taking, it's gonna take a negative number, convert it to positive number. So we really only get an output range of zero to 100, which is perfect for what we're doing because what I wanna do is automate the moving around of these by using a, a wave generator. And I'm gonna slow it right down uh, so that I have a wave generator at 0.1 and then I'm gonna just slightly different, 0.3 let's say, and I'm gonna change the shape of that to be a triangle. Um, just so that there's some variance in the shape that they're doing and we don't get like a, a perfect sine wave movement happening. All right, so what we see now is that we have this nice hole being punched through and moving around. And uh, I mean, it's simple and it's working. And if you wanted to build something like this, whereas peeking through to live video feeds or, you know, you can make the window rectangular if you want it to be more like a window, uh, you could control this through the mouse or motion tracking, like a connect or whatever. It's all variable, but we're going to continue ahead by using a uh, wave generators at the moment. And you can see that we have only one projector being output. All right. And we have, uh, a one video input coming into this as well. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because what we're going to do, and this is our background video. So remember that that's always playing in the background beyond all this stuff. What I'm going to do is uh, shrink this down a touch and move that video playback out of my way. I'm going to select everything except our input and our output, and I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to scale back to normal. I'm going to add a user actor, user, user actor. Okay. User actor, open that up and paste in everything I just cut away. Only two things I need to add right away. I need to add a user output for our video output, and I need to add a user input for our video input so that we can get this back into the chain of things going to save and update all. Um, just bring everything together here so it fits into one screen. Nice and like that. Boom. Okay, drag that over here. So we have our background video, which is our star field. We have your foreground video, which is our static. I'm going to drag that into there. And now we have the hole moving around once again. Well, that's kind of fun, right? Well, now we now that we have a user actor that simply has a, an input and an output of one video, what we can really easily do is duplicate that and reconnect the video through. So one feeds into the other. And now we have two of them moving around or daisy chaining one into the other. So what we have is we have static coming in. We have static with one hole being punched coming out, that going into the next user actor, and then static with two holes compiled together being uh, output as our final output. 
Well, that's all great and well, but what if we duplicate that again? And we add that here. We take uh, this video feed and we daisy chain it all through again. And we drop that here. Well, amazingly, we, now we have four of these running all simultaneously. Well, that's that's fun. But one problem that we can run into with this is that they all initiate at the same time when we enter the scene. So if I leave the scene and come back, all four of those circles are now on top of each other. So it only it only looks like one circle. So what can I do? Well, what I will do to make that more interesting is we'll open up our user actor. And um, I'm going to add some random attributes to this. So I will do an enter scene value or enter scene trigger. I will use random. And I'm going to want at least two randoms over here. I'm going to daisy chain my randoms just because I do that a lot. <clears throat> And let's see, we're going to want to uh, limit scale value a couple of values for these wave generators so that so that these circles move around at different speeds. Uh, so our one random input will go there, our other random input will go here, um, and we're going to keep them kind of slow. We're going to go 0 0.01 through uh, 0 0.2, and <coughs> excuse me, I'll do the same here, 0.01 to 0 0.2, and if I connect these up, that to there, and this to here, and trigger this enter scene, you'll now see that it's changed its speed and movement attributes, so that it's now behaving slightly differently than the other one. So if I now close this user actor, what will happen is it's going to update all the user actors to have the same, the same random element within it, and then reload. So I'll save and update all, and now you see that they all start in the corner because all those wave generators start at the same point, but they're all now changing at different speeds. So now all the circles appear to be moving at different rates. Okay, so that's sort of fun. Uh, let's take it a few steps further. Let's go back into our user actor. And what else can we randomize in here to give these circles a little bit of an individual sort of feel to them? Well, I, I'm going to just simply copy one of these enter scene triggers with random and a, and a uh, limit scale value. So I'll copy and paste it and move it over here uh, so that I can drag it down. I'm going to make it so that on opening the size of the circle and its um, frame are set dynamically. And I'm going to make them smaller so that they, they're easier to fit more into the window there. So I'm going to go from a, a size of 6 to a size of 12. Now we have to connect these to quite a few, uh, quite a few locations, just so um, the width and height on both of those shapes that are being compiled together can be done correctly. Now if we trigger this and take a look, there you go, you can see that there's a smaller circle there. Um, and we, could, we can even be kind of fancy with this in that we can take that same <clears throat> uh, random number so that it matches every time and we can duplicate the limit scale value actor run that same number into there and give it a scale of I don't know maybe uh, 0.5 to 2 for the line size depending on what it is so now if it's a small circle it gets a smaller uh, line size and as it gets bigger the line size gets bigger all right so if I once again close that, save and update all, uh, we now have a bunch of smaller circles with individual line sizes uh, moving around at different rates. Okay, well that's fun. I'm going to keep going because I like that there's all this in the static on top. We have some color going on there and I like that there's color variation. So what I think I will do again is uh, duplicate some of this. So duplicate another scaling amount and I'm going to create a random color for every one of these circles by using a color maker in hue saturation brightness because I only want to change the hue and the hue on on these if you look at the scale is from 0 to 360 
So we will connect that up. We will change the rate, the color range that it can pick uh, between zero and 360. And just, uh, what is it that we want to do? It is the only the line color that we want to change. And because the static saturation is a little bit low, I'm going to drop that to 80 just because I think it'll match nicer. I'm not sure. And let's do a quick test again. Let's trigger. Now we see that we got some colors coming there. Maybe I'll even drop that a little lower for the saturation. Sure. Go like that. Save and update all. Boom. All of our circles have color. Well, that's, that is fun. So let's just go a lot further with this. That's four circles. That'll be eight circles. Um, yeah, let's go further and duplicate that again. What is that? 12 circles there. I'm going to duplicate that out. I think I can run a lot of these. That'll be 24 circles. Now, obviously, this is going to depend on what your video card can handle. I have a 1070 in this machine, and the video is being um, running at 10 or 1920 by 1080. So uh, you can see that my 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 load has gone up to about 30 percent. But I have uh, what is that? 24 circles now running independently with all their own random values. Uh, we can open up that up and look at it a little bit bigger on the stage here. So we have a cluster of video portals, a little more beyond, a little beyond where I was originally going to take this. But when I started playing with it and I started seeing the daisy chaining capabilities of this, uh, I really quite enjoyed what was happening. Uh, there are a lot of alpha channels being drawn and punched through here, but it's running really nicely. At 50 frames per second or so on my machine. Uh, what I will show you briefly though is the very first version of this that I made where it's uh, a single hole and I made it so that on mouse over the mouse takes control of it and you can move it around in kind of interactively. Uh, which I found was kind of cool. In some cases, what I did is I put text behind and you could only read the text by scrolling the porthole over it to discover what was behind it, uh, which I thought was kind of an interesting effect. Um, but yeah, either way, this is, uh, this is our video porthole and, uh, I hope you enjoyed walking through that with me. Goodbye.